Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, soak this in for a minute. We are not worthy. This is the mighty king of the hill, top of the line. The best fully automatic turntable ever made. This is the JVC Victor QLY77F. Of course, it's been recapped and restored. You can see it's in a custom plinth. It's got a brand new dust cover. It's got a Denon DL301 Mark II moving coil cartridge on it. We are not worthy, guys. Man, buckle up. Let's go over the nicest, coolest, fully automatic turntable I've done. Let's check it out. So I hope y'all are doing well. We're doing great after the big Snoop Dogg runaway scare. Cold here, but man, at least we're not full of snow like a lot of guys in the Northeast. Man, I hope you guys up there are doing great. But man, I'll we'll talk about this turntable. Good Lord, guys. <laughs> It's the best fully automatic turntable ever done, the Victor QLY77F. If that's not enough, it's been recapped and restored like I do them with Nichicons and Panasonics on Electrolytics, and the motor's been lubed, and the arm's been lubed, and the VTA tube's been clean, and the front panel switches have all been clean, and the motor waveforms were set with a scope, and the variable resistors were a DVM, and I put up a 301 Denon. Mark II on here. This is a used one, but it sounds fantastic. It's in great shape. If you guys remember the A95 that I did here maybe a month or so ago that sold so quick, same kind of finish on this. So this is uh, polyacrylic gloss, you know, polyurethane, over plastic dip black rubberized, which actually deadens this thing even more, over uh, satin black primer. So it gives it that gloss, yet leathery kind of look to it which is just great i mean there's no other room light in here other than you know what you, what you see i mean i don't have the big room lights and stuff anymore but this thing just shines like a baby's butt man i just it's just really really cool i'm so glad how these come out i'm loving them i'm loving them but let me get the back there it's all done as well um the table itself I glued this back here this was this was cracked but it's it's totally strong and fine it's no problem there and i see one little nick on this here that I think I actually put on it while I was moving around and working on it. So, you know, screw me, but anyway. But with that being said, man, with a brand new dust cover, guys, Jesus, it does not get any better than this. So let me jump in. I want to talk about my artist today because, well, it's actually artists. So I've been on a Memphis kick lately. I just did some power pop in Memphis, but I want to actually talk about the other side of town. And we're going to talk about some artists that... Um, you've never heard of and probably most people outside of their families never heard of but not for lack of trying let's go ahead and talk about the uh funk and r&b artists from the uh, late 70s to mid 80s in memphis let's take a listen to some stone crush so my albums today is a two record compilation set called stone crush it's done by light and the attic records this really cool indie label out of seattle and they put together like compilations of like obscure but cool records like remember the jim sullivan i did and they do like all the lee hazelwood and and nancy sinatra and they have a country funk collection it's really really cool just you know that kind of stuff really cool indie record and they put this out okay uh just a couple years ago so how this how I got on this Memphis kick? My buddy Craig and I, we did a Harry Nielsen, John Lennon getaway back in July. We basically flew into Cleveland, rented a stupidly expensive car, which we shouldn't have done. But anyway, we drove it back all the way back here to Texas. And we stopped at every dive bar and music store and record store. You know, we go to one dive bar and they recommend another one. We go to one music store, you know, and we just got to meet the coolest people across the country, man. Just, I mean... When you watch so much news, you just think the world's just going to hell in a handbag, which it probably is, but you realize there's just a lot of cool people still out there just living their lives and trying to make it work. That was just really reassuring for me. So anyway, we get to Memphis, and that's where Craig's from. So we actually spent a couple days there. We went to the Stax Museum and, uh, you know, went around looking at the record stores and stuff there. We went to the Stax Museum tour. I was like, man, I'm, this is awesome. I'm going to find me some Stax music, right? Well, I went to all these record stores, and they, none of them had any, like, compilation stacks records right you know and i'm like wow so we've went to shangri-la records which is it's my little sticker right there they're really well known because they had a label themselves back in the day where they would like record artists after after stacks closed because sadly the story of memphis is really kind of screwed up because they were just a 
you know, there was a birthplace of rock and roll, you could say, because of Elvis and Sun Records and Carl Perkins and that, all that stuff. And it was just a melting pot, you know, Booker TDMGs and Steve Cropper and all these guys, you know, white guys and black guys working together, making fantastic music. It was awesome. There was just killer music coming out of there until like maybe like 67 or so when Otis Redding died in a plane crash. And then the next year, Martin Luther King was assassinated. And they, they talk about this in that documentary. That's that's it plays when you go to the Stax Museum. That you know, it just changed the the town. Just kind of got polarized. Yeah, there was riots and all kind of stuff, and just that camaraderie music thing. Just it just wasn't the same. And then you know, by the early '70s, Stax was in financial trouble, and by '75 they were bankrupt. And by '77, Elvis got assassinated, or he, I don't think he assassinated, he died uh, in '77, and that was. That was kind of it, man, for the city and for stacks. But there's a whole plethora of hundreds of people who were working in the music business, session musicians and, and you know, uh, caterers, drivers for art. I mean, there's this whole big scene. So all these uh, music studios, record recording studios and stuff, they wanted to stay alive. So they started, like, doing hourly rates and just getting anything they could get people in there to record. Well, there's, you know, for every person who makes it there's a hundred people who tried to make it and there's a thousand people who wish they could make it and there's a million people who never tried well this is a story of a bunch of people who tried to make it this record and like i said probably because of all the camaraderie and the coolness and the nice you know normal regular folks we met that were so cool this record just touched a place to me because it is full of a bunch of people who just literally saved their money Saved their dimes. They were like, you know, you know, they had side jobs. They would hire these session musicians, these you know, these A-list dudes from from Stacks who were still, you know, like looking for work, and they would try their hand at making records. Now, you know, they would, they would. I mean, there's some crazy stories. This guy here, Frankie Alexander. Okay, he was a bricklayer. Okay, minimum wage bricklayer. He saved up for two years to get enough money to go to a session, and he didn't know anything about music. He looked on the back of a Barkays record. If you know anything about. Memphis music, the Barcades are great. Saw who the producer was, got a hold of that guy, hired him. Okay, so they come in, they're doing his song, they run out of money. He goes back bricklaying for another couple months, comes back and they finish the stuff, right? And uh, the guy I'm going to feature here, who's the song's named after, uh, O.T. Sykes, he's a dentist, okay? He traded dental work for all these musicians who couldn't afford dental work for studio time, <laughs> okay? Just I don't know. There's a there's a guy on here, uh Kato Walker's his name. Uh, his dad was BB King's bus driver. So of course he's gonna make it, right? So he he befriends BB King's nephew and gets him to produce his songs. So, you know, I mean, just all these different kind of crazy things. So this runs runs a gamut of like 10 years of attempted people making it work. So, you know, the sound quality is good. Because it actually was sourced from 45 stuff. I'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, there was just, you know, there was no, there was only two radio stations in Memphis playing soul music. And, you know, th you know these guys would, you know, they'd do their studio time. And, you know, they would just go get a box of 45s made. And they would try to go to the club and get them played and try to get them played on the radio. And once they realized that that wasn't going to happen, they all went basically folded into obscurity. They went back to their day jobs, but they, they, you know, they lived their dreams, you know? I mean, the only guy who had any sense of, of uh, making it is uh, the guy we were playing with T. Sykes, and he didn't really make it. He just already had money because he was a dentist. You know, he was actually, ha he was the only guy who had a really, like, a really high-paying job. So there's a booklet that comes with this thing. It's like 24 pages. It's, it's just amazing, the stories of these guys. And these songs, because they go from 77 to 87, there's everything from, like, cameo, like, 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 you know, cameo sounding and print sounding and, you know, funk sounding stuff. So it runs all over the gamut. But just the songs themselves, I mean, overall, I mean, it's the stuff's really cool. There's no big hit records in here anywhere, right? And the recording quality is is actually really good considering the fact that they had to go and just literally go find 45s and create, you know, go crate digging and find these records and transfer them, which I guess that should probably get me to... Um, the, the two guys who did this, a guy named Daniel Mathis and a guy named Ch Chad Weekly. They're DJs and collectors in Memphis. And, you know, they knew about a lot of these artists. They went and did all this digging, took them years, dug up songs, went and met the families of these people. So a lot of these people are still alive. A lot of them are dead. You know, some of them just died in obscurity and their kids threw their tapes out. Maybe there was just a couple records down the attic kind of thing. 
Others, there's collectors paying like hundreds of dollars for their albums. I mean, for the, for these songs, right? It's it's insane, right? They're, in Europe, maybe some of you guys know about some of these artists. They say they're getting 300 euros for one of these singles, right? The craziest thing I heard was there's like a, a lowrider car scene out in LA, of course. Those guys in the lowrider car scene fell in love with these with these songs. They would actually go and find these old dudes. Now these guys are like 60s and 70s. They'd fly these guys out to LA and have them sing along to their 45s, right? And for some of these guys, that was their, they were just happy. Other guys were so jaded and didn't trust anybody that they never took the money and they just died in obscurity. It was just kind of crazy. So anyway, like I said, I cannot recommend, you know, re, you know, high, I, I so love this record. Jeez, oh man, go find it. Uh, I, I think it's maybe like 25 bucks for the double deal. And the booklet alone is, it's amazing. But the guy I'm going to feature here is what's, it's the title track. It's this guy, O.T. Sykes. He was a singing dentist. Okay, that's what he called himself. And, you know, he, he already had a Cadillac in his mink coats. And so he would see Isaac Hayes driving around town and his green fur Cadillac that they've got on display at Stack. So he got one too, you know, and, you know, he made he made a shot at it. But, you know, he he realized what was going on, you know. I mean, he, he you know, he made a good living doing what he did and he's got a really great attitude about it. But we're going to play his song because it's actually one of the best songs on the record and it's really cool. But, um... You know, his end was that uh, the guy who uh, sold cars to the people who worked in the studio, used car salesman at the studio, put up his original money to get his first songs made because he knew those guys who worked in the studio because he gave them deals on cars. It's all that kind of stuff. Like, you think, know, this woman worked at the grocery store where so-and-so from the studio came. I mean, all those kind of crazy stories that you hear about but you never saw came to fruition. They came to fruition here. So it's just really, really cool. I'm going to go ahead and do the next segment. I'm going to show you how the turntable works. And we're going to play a little bit of OT sex. We'll play a little bit of Stone Crush for you. It's really freaking cool, man. I'm so glad you got a chance to check this out. I cannot recommend this record enough. It's just it's just awesome. Try to find it. Like I say, it, it's, it, it'll be worth your while. Let's go ahead and uh, like take a listen and check out this turntable. So to show you how this turntable works, it's you know fully automatic. It's, it's really just freaking amazing. It's basically a motor section and a control section. That's why you, some of these buttons do double duty. But you have a power button right here. This turns it on, okay? You have your speed selector for 45 and 33. This manually starts the turntable. If you just want to start the motor section, you would hit this and it turns it on, okay? Now, across here, you've got dials for your tracking force and your anti-skating and your cue damping because, yes, this has... JVC's version of the Denon Servo Tracer Tracker arm, right? But you also have buttons here. You have a repeat button that will play side over and over again. You have a size button for 30-inch record, which is 12-inch, or 17, which is a 45, you know, single. Then you've got your locate feature. You guys know about this stuff on the Denon's. The, motor, the arm motorizes in and out if you want. Up and down is your cueing. Start and stop is your start and stop. This is your zero balance button. If you guys know anything about JVC's, you know, this is the dumbest idea this is why you don't pay engineers hourly, okay? So well, you see this, when it turned off, the arm is up. I'm going to turn it on and show you. When you because it's magnetic, it, the arm comes down. I guess there was some kind of problem in Japan in the 70s and 80s with electrical dropouts. And they didn't want uh, records, you know, if you're playing an album and the power goes out and it's a tube amp and it, it roars down to a stop... You know, maybe you get like a lot of low frequency of as it stopped. Is how it was explained to me, you know, in logical thing. So what they did was they built in an opposite tracking force. So in other words, when this thing's turned off, it's actually like a half a gram or three quarters of a gram less than balanced. So that if the power goes out, this thing, the arm will pop up. Now, I didn't know this is any kind of issue. I guess Japan has... Wonky electronics, right? So you, there's a whole way to set this thing up, use this zero balance and make it work. Screw that. Get yourself a digital status gauge, you know, set it on, set this on one and a half, put the gauge on here, dial your arm in until you get your, you know, whatever your frequent, you know, your thing is, and you'll be set. And don't worry about this. Just put the lock on when you're not using it, okay? That's, unless you want me to do a three-part course about the history of zero balance, and why you should never, ever do it, just do that. But anyway, this is a Denon 301 Mark II. 
Uh, if you guys remember on the A95, it sounded so damn good. I had another one here. This one's used. The one I put on that one was a brand new one. But I'm including that with this thing because it just, these fucking rock. They rock, okay? And like I say, back here, this is removable arm one. You can get an S arm for this thing. They're rare. They're much rarer than the Denon's, but they're out there. But, you know, you just unscrew this and the arm pops off, right? Arm lock is here. This slit right here and here is for VTA. You loosen those up and you can lift the arm up and down. This is where you go. This is your funky ass counterweight. Another idea that was too stupid to breathe, but they did it anyway because it's got like a matching bar in here. So it's just convoluted. But it's just, you basically, you know, use this to get your, you know, set your tracking force up, right? Then over here, you'll see, oh, where is it? Oh, it's right there. That right there is your hole to just where it drops. And I've got that all set for you. Okay, so like I said, when you start the motor over here, it lights up red when it's off. But as soon as it gets to speed, it turns green. Same thing here, we change to 45, turns green. Go back to 33, goes green, shut it off. Big brake circuit, yes, I changed that too, upgraded it. Stops like right now, okay? And that is pretty much it. When you wanna play a record automatically though, you would just hit your start button here. So let's go ahead and wanna feature the song Stone Crush on You. This is O.T. Sykes, the singing dentist. And this is the amazing JVC Victor QLY 77F. Check it out. And that is great OT Sykes. It goes on for five more minutes because that's what you do when you got a dance track. I'm really impressed because, you know, these studio guys could have just took these guys' money and played half ass, but there's some really excellent playing on this record. But let me just show you the rest of the stuff here. You got that locate feature, as I mentioned. You can go over here, hold it down, hold it back, and then just lower it down, and you got another track, right? Like I say, I mean, there's, there's freaking horn sections. I mean, this, this thing is awesome. I mean, no shit, guys. It's, it's for a bunch of people who had day jobs and never went anywhere. It's it's really freaking amazing. Just the stories is 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 cool as well. But anyway, that's the great uh, Stone Crush album. This is the fantastic QLY seventy seven F. Let me go ahead and wrap this up. We'll go over the pricing and uh, how you can grab this thing and what's coming up next. Thanks for checking it out. So, kids, with the brand new dust cover down. Holy crap, what can I tell you, man? This is just a fantastic King of the Hill, top of the line, JVC Victor QLY 77F, direct drive, fully automatic turntable. It's recapped and restored. It's been taken all down to bare wood. I mean, I've had this thing completely apart and completely put it back together. So all the solder joints have been redone and all the wires have been all checked and it's been scoped and you know, DVM'd and tested. I mean, I've been playing a bunch of records on this thing with other cartridges, and I knew I had a 301 here. I put it on, I didn't, I didn't play 25 records with this cartridge because it's used, but I, you know, I just put it on here and just played a few records with it just to make sure everything's good. And oh, God, man, it sounds so good. Anyway, this thing is ready to rock. Now, with that being said, it ain't cheap. This turntable is $1,300 plus shipping. That's actually cheaper than the last one I sold that wasn't even custom finished and it didn't have a brand new dust cover. So I'm trying to, you know, consolidate as best I can and keep the prices down. Cause I know a lot of folks, man, it's getting that time of year, but man, if you're, you got somebody you want a Christmas present for, it don't get any better 
than this turntable. And like I said, I'm trying to get stuff done in time for, you know, Christmas for people. I'm hoping to get another turntable out this week. It might be, wait for it, it might be a Denon DP67L. Yeah, I'm going for the big bucks, you know. <laughs> The king of the Denon uh, semi-automatic turntables because it was the one that replaced uh, the 59L. So it's a saucer version of a 59L, basically, with no pitch control because you don't need it. Uh, anyway, and I think I might have a 59L coming. And I think I might have another Pioneer, uh, smaller Pioneer coming. And I think I might have a 9010 Kenwood coming. Oh, my God. I am, I am flush with high-end good stuff. And I've also got some cool stuff coming as well that's a little bit more affordable. You know, Denon 45s and Pioneer 707s and stuff like that. So I'm trying to make a range here for people because, man, giving the gift of music and being able to, like, you know, when people listen to vinyl, they tend to sit still, relax, and enjoy it. Like, you're not usually not doing chores while you're listening to stuff. It just tends to reset people and make them relax. So, God, and just... just just for that alone, man, it's 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 the reason why I do this stuff, man. So, well, anyway, I can't thank you guys enough. As I said, it's thirteen hundred plus of shipping. I only take Zelle. I only take PayPal friends and family. No regular PayPal. Uh, there's a way to go on there and send stuff without the fees and the taxes. And uh, I can take a check from you, but you just have to wait and let it clear. You know. So, with that being said, man, if you guys have been looking, I don't do these very often, but when I do, they're freaking insane. Man, I hope somebody, uh, this is going to make somebody extremely happy. Hopefully it's you or somebody you love because this is one of those once in every two or three year turntables. So jump on it while you can, guys. I so appreciate you. Snoop Dogg's fine. He's passed out in the other room. He's heard Stone Crush so many times he doesn't want to come here. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so much again. I appreciate you. Take care. And uh, we will catch up with you soon.